What's up everybody, FSC Trucking. Well, today is not the best of days, so I'm not really sure how this is gonna play out, but we're gonna figure this out here very shortly. I'll give you a real quick recap. Yesterday I did a live video regarding my son and his fiance Lydia's 99 Chevy Suburban, sorry, GMC Suburban that I purchased for them as a wedding gift. This way the young couple doesn't have any debt and no strings attached, no co-signers that might decide to yank the issue with the truck should there be uh plus who needs 15 to 20 grand in debt for a tiny ass car this is cash debt free and no strings attached no marion nets being made of my son and his fiance with that being said yesterday i got done doing the live and then i went outside and an orwell decided to show me late last night after getting done with the uh the frame a frame that i was working on for the ford the chassis right here i said to myself well Time to go home. And then I went outside and Orwell decided to say, yeah, you're going to have a more difficult week this week. It is what it is. Let's get to it. Let's get through it. Let's go solve our problems. So as I came out last night, there wasn't the sunshine, I wasn't casting a shadow. I had the Hemi Dooley over there running, and I looked at, there's like some water underneath the truck. But that water is frozen. So it is a snow melt that fell off and melted. it. If that water's frozen, what's that liquid? Trouble is, it isn't a little bit of liquid either. And as you can see, it's still dripping. Now, Orwell has multiple problems sitting right here right now. Number one, it's cold out. It's in the neighborhood of about 28, 29 degrees. It's supposed to warm up to about 38. No, about 32, 34-ish. The rest of the week's supposed to get warm. Today's Sunday. My plan was today I was going to run the APU while I worked at the shop and then fire up Orwell without doing a cold start and then bring him inside. But now it's been sitting outside for so long in the cold that the only way to get them fired up and get them inside is to do a full-blown cold start, rolling smoke, coal, the whole, you know, bit and worrying about whether it'll start or burn up a starter and all of that crap. And since we got the APU, we usually just run it and preheat the engine that way. Now you say, why don't I plug it in? Well, there's a reason for that. The plug is buried up underneath. And being it's so cold, the hydraulic oil for reason up the cab oftentimes freezes because there's a little bit of moisture in that still if i can't get the cab raised up i can't get to the plug for the block heater for the plug-in i've never needed it with the green apu well now if it's low on coolant the apu might struggle and have problems because it needs the coolant to keep the engine warm so luckily i have coolant in stock so we're gonna go ahead and go into the storeroom get the coolant and then go ahead and get orwell filled and then we're going to fire the EPU, and then I'm going to get work done. I don't know if I'm going to work on Orwell today, but we got to work on something today because we're starting to have equipment failures around here, and that's not good. So let's go get our coolant and get things situated. All right, first things first. Actually, we need that green ladder right there. It makes life a lot easier to get coolant in Orwell if we have a ladder. So we'll go ahead and grab our ladder. Now I can do this by just standing on the bumper and grabbing them grab handles, but why bother? So we get this done, and then we'll get the water. Now most things on cab overs you can access with the uh, cab down, such as how to check your coolant level in the truck. Coolant level is obviously checked up here. And down there, that little door right there is how you open up to add oil and check your oil. you can see that if at all 
there's just a splash of water on top of the tank there so it's low we gotta add we gotta add water now in this truck i run caterpillar extended life coolant but when we put the green apu on they had to add a lot of coolant because the coolant system got much larger with adding all the hosing the hvac box and the green apu itself so they just put regular i don't know where to, what what brand of coolant they got but it's the elc but it's the extended life coolant meaning it's pre-treated but it doesn't have it's not the caterpillar one that i run so the coolant was a little old when's the last time i probably put coolant in this truck last probably two years ago so i i gotta rep i'm gonna replace the coolant anyway now i do have the for lack of a better term bobo brand uh fleet farm elc red coolant for these that's the same as the caterpillar it's not the caterpillar brand coolant i think caterpillar probably has the better coolant of all of it but either way it's the right stuff so we're gonna go ahead and fill it up with that and then we'll fire up the green apu get some work done and when all wells warm we're gonna fire them up and get them indoors then we're gonna figure out okay what is exactly wrong with orwell and how do we solve its problem is it a hose now that's the other thing too i wanted to mention it was not leaking while i was on the road last at least not that i noticed but last time i had it inside before this last run it did uh, leave a little bit of water on the ground but also brought it in with snow on it so i thought it was snow melt mixing with some oil stains on the ground because it didn't have a red tint it had a brown tint to it so it wasn't 100 percent now obviously it's clearly dripping a lot of water so i think it drips more when it's cold it could be a loose clamp could be that water that water elbow on the front of the on the front of the water pump housing that we changed the second time because those elbows are made from chinesium and the original one was wore out from caterpillar because it was like 40 years old so who knows could be a water pump could be a chafed hose unsure either way we got to get the coolant and then figure out what exactly is going on There we go. This is, uh, do I add water to this stuff or not? I'm trying to remember. Yep, says right there. Add a 50-50 mix of Fleet Charge SEA, pre-charged coolant, antifreeze concentrate, and water to the reservoir marked on the reservoir tank. Too Excellent. Long. Now we know what we need. We need this and an empty one. Well, we'll just dump this in there and then get an empty. Trusty funnel. Oh, that works out almost perfect. A little flip on the end of the funnel holds it from going in too far. That's why I'm not just putting straight water in it. I do want to be able to reuse it in case they're, uh, this is an easy fix. I don't know yet. Now I just got to refill this water. And, well, wash, rinse, repeat. All right, now just using the empty container full of straight water out the sink. A lot of people say you should use distilled water. I don't have distilled water, so we're just running straight water obviously mixing it with gallons of antifreeze so I don't need to fill it fill it but I do got to get enough in there to make sure that the APU doesn't run without it otherwise the APU will overheat and shut itself off and I will be wasting our time water on the bottom of the tank so we'll fire the APU now and we'll let, let it work with that I think two gallons is probably all it needs well let me leave this here
Alrighty boys and girls, here it is. Green Ape, you fired right up just as expected. That unit is bulletproof, man. It never fails me. So with that, we're going to let it warm up the engine. Then we're going to fire up Orwell and we'll get on with today's video. See what we broke or what broke or whatever. Alrighty everybody, so I was just actually listening to Tim's live uh, Tim Gentry is uh, was doing a live, so I would take, took a break, watched that for a little bit, a little Orwell heat up. I'm getting ready to call underneath that truck and just stick my face on it, see if I can't figure out where the leak is. Problem is, I may have to like literally lay on the ground in the water, so I'm trying to avoid that. Although I do have some boards I can lay on, but yeah, it's just I just looked outside, it's just drip, drip, drip. So yeah, it's a pretty major freaking leak. And then of course my plan was and still is, I wanted to clean up the shop a bit because yesterday I got done doing the live. I still got my tripod right here. I finished the A-frame, put the Ford's frame, the tail end of the frame on there. We'll get into what that was for if you guys haven't figured it out or watched previous videos. That's the thing, but it seems like Tim's got the same problem I do, where it's just like everything's getting needy. Luckily, the Hemi Dooley and Jen's Mercedes are, uh, they're new enough to not have a problem. Now, granted, the pickup, the now, granted, the Hemi Dual, he's brand new, and the Mercedes, oh, what's it got, like 76,000 miles, so it's pretty new, it's 14, so it's about almost 10 years old, And but either way, they're not being needy yet, um, knock on wood, but yeah, they're doing okay. The issue is everything else we're involved in, so let me show you what I got to do, and I'll figure out how to actually progress here. So here's my thought. What I wanna do is, uh, move this car over here all this stuff's gonna have to be because i gotta get everything in here right so that car has got to get moved over here this stuff's got to get moved this is stuff i took off the cab over ford obviously so this stuff can be moved not sure 100 where i want to move it to but that's got to go it's basic straightening i have to do the a-frame i was thinking today i was going to put it behind the ford and it actually lift up the back end of the truck and set it on the A-frame. The idea is to put the A-frame, I gotta take that light box off. That's gonna be just basically junk. That comes off, A-frame goes under, suspending the back end of the truck. And then I'm gonna hold the front end up by these bigger jack stands here by the cross member. Hook them up here and here because with this frame rail missing, this axle is going to dangle because that mount will just be, you know, the your spring shackle mount, that's just going to dangle there. So that's not going to work. So you can't hold it by its axle. It's going to be held by the frame. That way it's nice and straight. That's what this A-frame is for right here. So that can hold the weight of the truck as it gets built. Also, I want to be able to hold up the chapel trailer while we replace the uh, landing gears and the cross members over the landing gears so that's that the problem with the chapel trailer obviously is everything underneath became storage and we're trying to i got room here to work so the idea is i have to get matt and lydia's suburban has to stay inside to get worked on cleaned up plus i don't want to leave it outside because i don't want the catalytic converter stolen out of it uh this obviously has to stay inside this stuff has to come apart that's the diffs for the for the Ford that came out of the 352. And there is room on the other side of the 352 body air compressor, I think, to put loose Ford cab over parts for now. That's the idea. And then, of course, once I do that, Orwell gets fired up and brought in. So um, once Orwell comes in, nothing can leave the shop. That's the problem because Orwell will block up the door. Um, the shop, only problem the shop has with cab overs is this side of the building is taller because the roof slopes the further towards the end you go the lower the ceiling you can't get a cab over to cab over over there see it has to be done on this side of the room so once orwell's in and the cab comes up matt lydia's suburban stuck inside and uh op, well duh, that's stuck inside everything's stuck inside so an orwell of course is the primary thing of how which we make our money so Orwell's next on a list being needy, but I'm not working on him outside. However, I'm gonna go outside and see if I can determine where the leak's coming from and what in the heck is going on. Let's see if I can get this done. Ooh, I 
I can see it dripping on that tube from something. All right, figured it out. It's coming out of that damned elbow. It comes off front of the water pump housing, sends water up to the uh, water air cooler. It's uh, like an air to air, but to charge air to water cooler. It's not a uh, like a regular air to air. It sends the compressed air from the turbo through the water pipe, or like a like a little radiator basically cools the charge air down using the engine's coolant to do it. And that's where it's leaking. So we did that when we put the stacks on the truck. I don't know if it's the elbow or the seal or the tube itself. And that wasn't the easiest thing to change out the last time. So I don't know. Maybe it's just another problem we have to deal with. All right, so that's that. Let's get this shop straightened up and then we'll get all well fired and get them in. Oh yeah, I was gonna mention this other stuff here too. So in addition to that, uh, when we did the live with Lydia and Matt Suburban, we backed it up. I backed the truck up and exposed this. I thought maybe it was water, but then now you can see where it's dripping more again. Now I'm looking at it, it looks more like engine oil. So apparently the kid's truck's leaking oil out the front of the engine or something in front of the engine. I, I don't know, I haven't even begun to look at it. So we literally just unloaded it parked it inside jen started cleaning it and that's it i haven't really done much to it so it's got to go that way and then get started figuring out what all it needs so yeah it's gonna be a busy busy shop day so let's just get let's just get started it is what it is right let's go cleaned up for the most part. I turned the Suburban around. Ultimately, the Suburban is going to go right here um, facing that way. That way Jen can finish cleaning up and I can open the hood and work on it, but Orwell has to go inside. So, Right now the game plan is I set the cherry picker up for the short arm. It should be able to pick up 3,500 pounds. So the basic idea now is I want to be able to just lift up the frame and get it up on the, the uh, stands. That way I can start getting the axle out of it. Um, and then move the stand forward to where it's actually going to be permanent for the well semi-permanent i guess so now the idea is to push the cherry picker over and uh chain it hopefully the cherry picker has got enough snot to lift it and just shove the a-frame underneath it it's really all i need it to do it's not a big major huge lift or job so Case, I'll put the pin jack underneath the center to differential and lift it that way. Good. This crazy idea works good or not? This actually weighs that much. This is why I need to get that damn forklift truck bought. Yeah, but I had a really cool one. It's high enough. Oh, not quite high enough. That's how it is. sticking down. I don't want the rivet sitting on the steel of the A-frame. That's good. Alright, 
right now it's up in the air. I forgot to take the wheels and tires off. I've posted the axle and the springs and suspension on Marketplace to sell it. We're not keeping that. Stud came with that one. Reason I'm not keeping the hub is the axles have different bolt patterns on this compared to the other truck. That's going easy. I don't want to shatter that socket. these work is these cleats jam between the wheel and the hub. So the wheel has no hub, the wheel just locks in there. That's how these work. Then there's a spacer that keeps the gap between the two wheels. And then the Now the other reason why these were a real pain in the neck was to get to your brakes your drum is obviously inboard of your hub bolted on by these bolts so to get that off you have to take the axle out and then take the bearings and take the whole assembly off as a unit that's why these were also a pain in the neck the other thing is if the cleats weren't tight you can step on the brake this will stay still the wheel will turn around a little bit and that'll slice your valve stems right off So you got valve stem like there, and then on the other one you see it down on the bottom right there. Now this is quite interesting. I was going to take the fifth wheel off with the framework on the frame here, this piece. These bolts go in, the nuts are on the inside. This bolt comes from the inside out with a nut. There's no head on the other side. I wonder, if, I don't know what this even is. Let's try it. bolt comes off, I'm sorry, the nut comes off, washer comes off, but look and stick my face on the inside. You feel for it. Oh, I feel it right there. It's kind of jammed in there. I see what they did. All right, so a good solid womp with a hammer uh, to seat that. Quite crooked. Because this hole is empty, and that one's crooked and obstructed by that cross member. This has been altered from its original. Not sure how, but it's been altered.
little air valve in the way. You start out you're taking it apart looking at it. Using a truck for static display is not exactly good for them. So here it is. Yikes. It's an old truck life for me. It's an old truck life for me. Everything is old and rusty. Everything is old and rusty. It's old truck life. Alright boys and girls, it's late. I got the shop set up. I got Snow White sitting inside. So now let's get Orwell fired up. We move the slider and get the big beast moving.
ready. All right, well, that's it. We'll start working on it on the next video, I guess. I don't go home. I'm tired, hungry. Been a long day.